407. So with number two uh, cozied in there, uh, basically Airboss has taken them as a flight of two. So the wingman at this point, all he has to do is follow his lead in for the initial and uh, everything's set for recovery and both will get grades. Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about Airboss and how Airboss relates to our Warfighter server in DCS and our Discord server. Today I'm joined with the CAG of CBW7 Vex and the XO of the VFA86 Bingo. Welcome guys. Hey, good to be here. So what would an Airboss be in real life? So an Airboss would be the commander of flight deck operations for a carrier group. He would organize launches and recoveries and make sure everything runs smoothly. Right, and so the Airboss program will help us do some of those things in terms of setting the ship into a launch mode or a recovery mode. And um, you know, also setting whether it's a case one, two, or three condition on the boat. And it'll also give us some great essay. Let's say I'm just a brand new guy to DCS or a brand new guy maybe to VNAO. Would I need to download and install Airboss or how does that work? You would actually uh, jump on the server. Uh, Airboss is already included with the software. So there's nothing the user has to do to uh, take part in uh, operations on CBW-7 Warfighter, everything's set to go. So it's within the radio menu function. Basically, you hit the radio menu button, and then you'll see an option for other under F10, and you'll find um, not only Airboss in that category, but some other things that are just within the Warfighter server that uh, we programmed in, uh, in terms of like uh, spawnable missions, actually changing the weather environment. And then within Air Boss, there's a whole bunch of other categories that you can go through. For instance, under the kneeboard category, there's an option called Carrier Info. By clicking on Carrier Info, we're gonna see uh, what case the carrier's in, whether it's case one, case two, case three. The BRC, current wind over deck, the tower frequencies, uh, the TACAN, the ILS, and even some recovery tankers uh, nearby in case you need a trick-or-treat. And under Skipper is where we can actually tell the boat to start a uh, case one recovery if the conditions permit. So if the weather's good, you can tell ask your boss to start a case one recovery, which is a fair weather recovery, basically a visual approach. Uh, case two is similar, but it includes some poor weather above 1,200 feet. So there's a different marshalling area. And of course, case three, which is night operations. Uh, all three are included with the uh, digital air boss uh, through the Moose program. And uh, it's not difficult to learn, but it definitely is beneficial if someone has some sort of background with how air operations work around the boat. Hey, and while we're on the subject, I just want to take the time to thank Funky Frankie, the guy that was in charge of developing the air boss script, and I think also the Moose script as well. Um, but hey, anyone that was involved in developing Airboss or the Moose script, uh, big thank you to you guys, big shout out. Um, you guys really added some value to our community and I think to DCS as a whole. Um, so, but Vex, you guys took Airboss and sort of added some lines of codes to it, or I think the Moose script, I'm not sure how that works, um, to make it to do the stuff we wanted specifically uh, for the program to do within our server. Is that correct? Yeah, so the original authors of the program uh, included uh, all the basic features you would need to have boat operations. Uh, launching and recovering, uh, Marshall stacks, uh, all of those items, the uh, virtual LSO. Now, these things are all really beneficial to guys when they're jumping on the server and there's no human interaction there. So this allows a level of detail and practice for uh, virtual naval aviators to uh, enjoy naval operations. Um, the menu system is basic to begin with, but as you delve into it, there's more and more that can be accessed. Uh, so it does, like I say, uh, garner uh, a lot of advantage if someone knows at least the direction to take it in when he's <clears throat> starting boat operations. Uh, and how does it work to where we get that immediate feedback and then we also see some sort of uh, feedback in Discord, right? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll turn this over to Bingo. And he All right. So whenever you contact Airboss and you come in, the Airboss grades Welcome your trap board. and there's four sections to the trap. There's the start, the middle, 
in close and at the ramp. And the air boss grades you in each individual section and puts everything together on a trap sheet, which it prints to Discord, and it gives you a grade based on a set of parameters and uh, and whatever, however you are flying within those parameters. So it'll it'll put out a sheet that shows your glide slope, your lineup, and your AOA, and put it all in visual form that reports to a Discord channel for you to go back directly after your pass and review what you're doing, what your trends are, where you need to be, and how you can improve your passes. So since it's all automated, we can get um, automatic greenie boards out of it. If your flight is longer than 20 minutes, um, it will actually count on your squadron greenie board, but anything that's shorter than 20 minutes will just be considered practice. And then beyond that, how come we don't use the in-game default ATC um, in terms of talking to the AI of the carrier and we choose to use Airboss instead? Why is that? So basically right now uh, in DCS, there's no access to being able to control the boat. So that means wind over deck, which is critical for recovery operations, isn't accessible to be changed by the pilots getting into the stack. Uh, the Airboss program will automatically turn the boat into the wind and set the speed based on the wind the direction and uh, have the proper uh, environment for uh, recovery of aircraft. Now, one could use the um, ATC along with Airboss, but at this point it's just redundant. Uh, using straight Airboss to do recoveries uh, is completely beneficial and a standalone uh, item. Yeah, and I would also say that um, the reason why Airboss is better in that regard is um, you don't have the AI uh, talking so much um, it's basically you're calling to the ship you're actually physically talking out loud over the radio so um, you know you can also practice the communication by yourself but if there's other people in the server you're not saying it and then s your robotic pilot is coming back and saying the same thing so there's a minimal communications and it's very uh, clean it's very uh, to the point so I, I, I'll say my marshal call and then I can actually hit the button that says request marshal and uh, the AI will talk back to me instead of my pilot talking to Marshall and then Marshall talking back to me while I just actually physically said it. It's much cleaner and uh, much more minimalistic. So Vex, let's talk about the different weather conditions we have built into the Warfighter server and how um, being able to access that information on, on Airboss in terms of uh, the weather report, just to get the altimeter, but also to get the, um, you know, the wind over deck. Yeah, absolutely. With the weather uh, missions we've included with CBW-7 Warfighter, it's a quite a dynamic environment, so nothing will ever be the same unless you practice on the same mission. Uh, a lot of talented guys have put some time into making this uh, weather system something to have an experience with over several different types. And of course, when you do that, you're going to get different winds, different carrier speeds, which will definitely affect how you want to roll into the groove, how you want to time your turns. So having access to that information is absolutely uh, beneficial to the pilot. Definitely. It gives us a lot of SA. And uh, but uh, another thing, I would say the thing that I love the most about Airboss, when you guys first showed it to me, it was like my first magical sort of DCS moment was when we were in formation and then one of you guys hit the set the section button and uh, all of a sudden, hey, I was included into your flight and Airboss knew that just like in real life, I was a part of your formation. So anything you did in terms of marshalling and coming down to initial, I was gonna be a part of that. That was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> one can uh, set a section before getting to 50, 50 nautical miles from the carrier. He can then uh, call into Marshall. Marshall will give him all the information of the carrier, what it's doing, the speed, BRC, weather, altimeter, uh, and then you can uh, descend and hit your marshal stack. And once you get to the controlled area, you can be on speed uh, at your altitude. And when you are established, uh, the air boss will contact you and give you a commence or a Charlie call. And then you will proceed to uh, initial and do the uh, carrier break as usual. And if you're in a multi-ship like a, a section or a light division or even a division, uh, you can all recover and get grades uh, from that recovery. Great. So is there anything else we should cover in terms of just talking about Airboss? I don't know. Bingo, anything you can think of? I think we pretty much covered the basics. 
Okay. One more important thing I forgot to mention is that VNAO is represented by two carrier wings. So you have CVW-7, which is um, mostly for guys that are flying on the west coast of the United States. Um, and, uh, you know, whoever, you know, internationally that that time frame works with as well. And then we have CBW-14, which is for guys on the eastern coast of the United States. And then whoever else internationally that time frame uh, fits into. And so um, CBW-14 also has Airbus hooked up um, into their into their servers that they use as well. So, um, you know, if you come into VNAO, uh, Airbus is going to be... Um, uh, a big part of definitely the um, the automatic greenie right. board uh, system so just wanted to double check and make sure I mentioned that as well uh, CBW 14 is a, a great group of guys as well so to keep it simple I'm just gonna leave a link to the main VNAO discord in the description so if you were interested in joining just uh, you know click that link and just say hi in the ready room channel and um, you know, just say, hey, I'm interested in joining and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time. Thanks, bye.